if we go into the word of God right now, right now. And then the time was that Elkanah offered to give Reverend Franklin to Penan, his wife, and to all her sons and her daughters, potions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy potion, for he loved Hannah. But the Lord had shut up her womb, and her adversary also provoked her sore, for to make her fret, because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did so, year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. Then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, Why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am I not better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest set up a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and forget and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. Hannah, the ideal mother. I've simply read this for your consideration, and that we might, while we think on Mother's Day and its significance and what it means that in these days when people are detouring from the path of the traditional pattern of motherhood then possibly our thinking and our talking will influence us to reconsider our ways. A great deal of sentiment has been built around this day. A great many tributes are made to mothers. Since this day has been set apart by Congress, as Mother's Day. Of course, people are communicating and expressing their respect and their love and their appreciation for mothers in any number of different ways. By telegrams, by letters, by cards, by gifts, and by any number of ways to say I appreciate my mother. Yes. Amen. I love and I respect yes. my mother. Yes. Yesterday, I was in the in one of the cleaning places, and a young lady began talking to me about Mother's Day, and told me that her mother had passed on. And uh, she said, I wish she was here. I would do thus and so for her tomorrow. But among the many things I want you to remember on this Mother's Day is let us not only have special Mother's Day. Let us let every day be Mother's Day. And to the young modern mothers, to the 20th century mothers, to 
the atomic age. Mothers. Yes. Let us remember that if you would have the eternal respect of your descendants, you must be deserving. Yes. For today, all mothers, I think, are not acting like mothers. You know, there are those who say that uh, they do not believe in divorce. Be that as it may, it seems to me that that assumption is based on the idea that of that, let that which God has joined together, let no man put it asunder. But you can't tell me I don't believe that all the folk that are married today, God joined them together. As I have said before, people marry for too many different reasons. And some of those reasons are not good ones. And so I think that some people would be better off if they did not have children. At least I know the children would be better off. Are you praying with me? I think, I think that a mother should follow a certain course of action. Should possess a certain attitude toward her children. In the first place, a real mother should have some sense of what the idea of motherhood really means. It means a little more than to merely bear children. It means a little more than that. In the first place, the person who brings children into the world is highly honored. You are performing thereby a divine duty and responsibility. And no matter what your attitude may be about it, with the bringing forth of children, Come responsibility and obligation. Whether you like it or not, God has so endowed you and has enabled you to bring forth children into the world. And you become the steward, the God-appointed guardian over those children. You cannot always determine what they will do. But what you can do, you can try as best you know how to imbue into them certain ideas that will be guideposts and warnings and stops in their lives. Or to our dismay and to our utter regret, we are often grieved at the course that our children take. They take courses that we had hoped they would avoid. But even with that possibility and even with that respect or with that prospect, we are responsible to do the best we know how. What God expects us to do for our sons and our daughters. 
And there seems to be something close, a little closer than father about mother. For you see, mother usually teach her children the first words that they utter. No wonder they call it the language that we speak, our mother tongue. Because usually we learn it from mother. The mother who believes in God not only teach her children the first utterances, the first audible and intelligible words that they speak, but she teach them the first things that they know about God. That is, if she know anything about God. So that uh, I think, I think, and I would to God that it were left to me. I think that every mother ought to be a Christian. Yes. Yes. I don't think that a mother is really equipped, is really prepared to bring up children if she herself does not know God. I think that mothers figure too definitely in the idea